All right, we about ready to start? All right. Are we ready? Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you out to the Cedar City Planning Commission meeting tonight. Today is January 17th, 2023. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our, you know what, we're going we're gonna to switch things up. And I'm going to ask Anjali to make sure that you get these added to the uh, agenda in the future. Let's begin with uh, a pledge. So if we would, uh, do we have a flag in here? Right behind you. Okay, right, right behind, behind you. you and I. So uh, we're going to start with a, with a pledge. Um, since I hadn't talked to anybody else, I'll go ahead and, and, and conduct. <coughs> I think that's the thing that's always important to remember one why we are why we meet and what we're doing this for so a better nation for all of us anyway so um, hopefully we can get that added to the agendas in the future to begin with all right so with that done I would like to move to item number one of our regular items which is uh, an approval for our minutes dated December 20th move to approve the minutes for oh. December 20th one thing on that, sorry, real quick. I, I did notice on the minutes, though, there was one of them that it said who made the motion, but it didn't say who seconded it. So, oh, right. yeah, I was reading through the minutes. I can't remember which agenda item it is. I'll have to pull it up. But I think it was the very last agenda item on that meeting. It just says so-and-so made the motion, but it doesn't say anything about who seconded it. I'll take a look at that. Carter motions. No, go. Go back up, then. That's right above that one. One more. Above that one. Sorry. Hold on. Let me pull it up. I can swear there was one of them that said so and so made the motion. I, I see. Second that, that one. That one. Um, but it didn't have a person who seconded the. I think it's the last one. Carter motion. Clause of recommendation. Or yeah, it was okay. the one actually where I made the motion. So I made a motion, but it says no. It doesn't say anything about who seconded oh, or how the vote went. Okay. So I don't know if we can. Mm, can, can we still pass the minutes just with that? Okay. Well, then I'll second. Can I just second his that's motion? That, that's my motion. Could that change? Okay. Question. Then I'll second it. <laughs> all right. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you, thank you, Carter, for check, catching that. Good catch. <clears throat> um, item number two. So this is going to be a public hear hearing. We're looking to vacate a public utility easement. Dallas, you want to walk us through it? Good evening, Dallas Buckner, Ghost Civil. Um, so this is uh, this is on the Man Cave project. The developers waiting for the weather to warm up a little bit before we do the the final plat. But um, but similar to kind of what we've done in Crescent Hills and some of those other projects we're looking to get this uh, through planning commission and then sync it up with the final plat when we get that to council um, but what happens when we do these when minor subdivisions are done we grant easements along side lot lines rear lot lines just as a part of the city ordinance um, and in this case this parcel had been created through a minor subdivision there was a seven and a half foot PUE put on either side of that lot line and with our subdivision um, and the, the INM zoning that we have, there's zero setbacks, but the seven and a half building over an easement's a problem. And so um, we are asking to vacate this public utility easement. And then when we come through and do the PUDs, all the common space is a kind of a blanket utility easement. So there'll still be plenty of space inside of it, but this was a minor subdivision done and there's no utilities that I'm aware of that were installed in there. And the utility companies, we put together a, an email to um, all those entities. They've already signed off on the final plat, um, at, but we put together a separate email and sent that out to them and said, hey, we're bringing this forward to planning commission today. And if anyone wants to come and speak at the public hearing. So. 
and we sent that out at 458. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we sent it out. We sent it out with application <laughs> last probably last Tuesday. Awesome. <laughs> so, and then the only difference on this one is that um, because it runs the entire span of the project, um, we're just doing. I'm trying to do the whole easement versus coming through with like a Crescent Hills. We went phase by phase by phase because that needed to stay intact because of the the sewer lines and stuff that were in there. But in this case, where there's nothing, we can just do it all at once and don't have to come back through with every successive phase of this and do it again. So, so Jonathan, you're okay with running all the utilities and everything down that underneath that roadway? And yeah, that's where the utilities would go. And I, I think you may mention this, that, that in a PUD, all common area is a public utility easement. So the utilities can run within that roadway um and and i'm i'm actually the one that recommended to dallas that he send out that email and that was sent out quite a you know bef before the uh, it was about a week ago and uh so yeah we seen yeah we see no issues with this and so in the road corridor with the pud it's basically we're gonna plot the private area is going to be each unit and so really they'd have from face a building to face a building through that whole road corridor to put in water, sewer, power, gas, telecom, all that. So, uh, it's the, the roadway itself is the minimum 26 plus the two foot rolled curb and then we've got the 22 foot driveways on it. That might not be true. We might not have 22 foot driveways. I think we've counted those as parallel spots because this spot was so narrow. But they've got they probably have at least 45 feet, 50 feet between those buildings. Just for disclosure purposes, not really a, a big one, but I do own multiple properties on Clark Parkway that butt up to this property on the west side, so I'll still be voting, but just so everybody knows. Do you have any utilities in there? Nope. <laughs> yeah, on Clark Parkway. <laughs> um, does, it, how, th does this affect the property owner that you're butting up to? I mean, or is this no, that, is so that the same property owner? Yeah, so the, the minor subdivision, our whole parcel is all owned by Deanne Tippetts. And so we're just vacating the seven and a half foot public utility easement that's on our property. Okay. There's still an adjacent seven, seven and a half foot PUE on the adjacent property owner. And that one stays in, stays intact. Okay. But is that enough of a PUE? I mean, if they go to develop one day and their plan is to use that PUE, is seven and a half feet enough? Well, it depends on what you put in there. And honestly, I mean, generally when you abut up to another project like this, that's someone's backyard. And so a lot of times those PUEs are in people's backyards, but pretty unlikely they would just put a road. And they would do right the same there. thing as you, is they would, they'll, right. use their, they'll use their PUE down their road in, yep. in their subdivision. Okay. And that can't ever, it's not ever going to be residential anyways because right. it's in the overlay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Commission, do we have any other questions for Dallas? All right, so this is a public hearing. So we will open the public hearing for this item. Anybody who wants to speak to it? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the Commission for recommendation. Move for a positive recommendation of vacating the public utility easement at 1950 West Clark Parkway. I'll second. All right, we have a motion for a positive recommendation and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Moving on to item number three. This is a minor lot subdivision also for Dallas. Yep, so this is a minor subdivision out at 4B Ranch. We came through when we did phase three of Forby Ranch, um, and we constructed these roadways. There's uh, a little bit of a hang up with the asphalt with the storms we got this year. Um, the asphalt section wasn't put down all the way as it as it typically is. So there's still um, a little bit of an asterisk on having the, the asphalt portion completed of this. But when we came through and did phase three, we put in um, water sewer, we put in all the utility stubs. We had already granted the PUE along the frontage of these. And so what the developer would like to do would be to come through and do a minor subdivision to uh, subdivide these parcels and then be able to, to do something with them with the utilities already stubbed in. And that's why this is a simple, simple minor because uh, everything's already there. We just need the, the lots. 
So this was never subdivided. It was always just one big piece. Yeah. So what? Strip. So the developer, when he purchased the property, it, you know, it was one hundred and thirty something acres. Yeah, but I mean, the, where these lots are, they weren't ever already divided up from the lots. It was just one piece, and now correct. You're yeah. So the, okay. the way that works, and then as we go phase by phase, they just back that out. And so this was part of the remainder. Okay. The remainder parcel. So the signs. These lots, can you blow it up a little bit, Jonathan? Part the one, like a little over an acre. All of them are. They look like they're about the same. Or bigger. Yeah, so they're. Uh, as 4B. Yep. I think most of the ones in 4B are, they're anywhere from like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 up to an acre. And these ones are all a little over half an acre, the one off the cul de sac. And so that RE zone is that half acre, half acre minimum. <coughs> so they all meet the. RE zone in the ordinance. What were they talking about in the sketch notes is referring to some remaining lots and the size of all the remaining lots and all that? So, yeah, so the, the existing Westview right of way is this dash line. So, this OHP is overhead power, and then the dash line just south of that, and that's like those are power pole symbols. So, this doesn't go all the way to Westview. There's still a strip right there that'll be retained as a, as a, um, as a part of that 4B ranch remainder. And we've got a 90-foot depth off that once <coughs> Westview's fully dedicated, if it's dedicated how we think it's going to be dedicated. Um, but we've, over the years of working on this project, we've had a lot of meetings as far as what Westview's width's going to be and all that. And so um, the current right-of-way, this is a 107-ish foot strip. It's like 106, 93. Um, and so with that, we could come back through and do a future subdivision and create parcels on there. Um, if the front west view? Yeah, the front west view. Okay. And then with that, you are obviously allowed to have houses at front on west view, like everything across the street from us. Yeah. You just have to make sure you don't have the backing maneuvers. So you've got to have a wide enough lot to do a circular driveway or something like that. Okay, so there was just some questions as whether or not those lots were even going to be big enough under the RE, but it looks like they are. Yeah, so they, if, if Westview gets dedicated how we think it will, they'll still be 90 feet deep, and then, you know, they could be whatever width. If they keep the same width as these lots, they'd be 90 feet by 170. So that's still a substantial lot. Commission, you have any other questions for Dallas on this item? Move to approve the uh, minor lot subdivision. I second. All right, so we've got a motion for an approval and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, okay, thank, thank you, thank Dallas. You. All right, item number four is another public <laughs> hearing for annexation of a property looking for Cascade Development Holdings or Excel Design Associates. Do we have anybody representing item number four? I don't think I have a representative here, but I could speak to it. Um, this is the project called Cascade Springs Apartments Phase 2. Um, the North Fire Station is right is in this area along uh, Commerce Center Drive, and then there's the Cascade Springs Apartments. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. But they're looking at adding another phase of that project to the north. Um, the The... The new phase is going to push the number of units over 80. So they're going to be up over 80 units, so they need to have a second access coming out of that project. And so as part of that project, they're going to be completing this horseshoe. So basically bring the road around and then bring it back down. I believe this is 2530 North. But as part of that, they need to annex into the city in order to complete that uh, road for the second access. And so that's what's driving the annexation at this point. Um, it's, it, uh, this annexation has been to city council. The city council accepted the petition. It's been through a 30 day protest period, which ended today. Um, there were no protests received. Um, so that's where we're at. The county has uh, agreed to, to the annexation in terms of allowing the annexation to move forward. Jonathan, in the sketch notes, it looks like there was a lot of concerns 
with bringing this in and the logistics of doing that. Has that been figured out? Yeah, it's been it's been through a lengthy review process in terms of the construction drawings, in terms of handling the drainage, um, the sewer, uh, water. So everything's been worked out. The construction drawings have been approved. Um, so it's it is a little bit of a difficult piece of property, but things have been worked out. Okay. So you feel comfortable with with the way things are moving forward, then? Yes. Okay. And they've actually they've. Res received a building permit for the project as well so they're moving forward with that so so yeah they're well we're sort yeah, of irrelevant then aren't we <laughs> so well they can build 79 units without us <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean obviously it's at their risk to keep it moving forward but um yeah all right <clears throat> commission do we have any other questions for for jonathan all right this is a public hearing so we will open the public hearing for any who wish to speak on this item. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for a recommendation. I'll motion for a positive recommendation. Second. We have a motion for a positive recommendation and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number six. So this is a development agreement. Five. Oh, sorry. <laughs> five. Sorry. I'm skipping you. We're going to push you down. <laughs> That's right. Sure. All right. Item number five. We'll do that one. That's a public hearing See for an annexation as well. So, no, Dave, where you been? I've been hiding. <laughs> yeah. I've been avoiding this. Dave, we're nice. Come on. Oh, I know. I've just been doing stuff elsewhere. So, anyway, Dave Clark, Platt and Platt. Um, this is just the remainder of, their, of the property that's owned by um, Cedar City RV LLC. They, they own this whole piece, but only part of it was within the city boundaries, and so they just wanted to annex the rest of their property. And just like the last one, they've gone through the whole state process of notifications, and it's been to city council already. You know, we've asked Tyler, well, why do we even have to go to Planning Commission? The city council's already accepted the NOI, but mm -hmm. it's a, it's the city ordinance. Yep. Right. So here we are. Um, well, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have anywhere up better to be on a <laughs> snowy <laughs> night like so this. Every so every annexation has to go through two whole sets of meetings to start the process and then to finish the process? All right, so this is the property where they're planning to build that beautiful new RV resort. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first process is just to check the petition. Oh, gotcha. Make sure that that's that part of it. And then this is the actual the annex. Oh, okay. How many uh, units are going in there? No. I have no idea. They have their own engineer. We're just helping them do the annexation. Oh, okay. But it's, it's big. I, I mean, it's got... Yeah, it's it's a two or three hundred unit. I mean, it's a big, it's, it's a big place. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Commission. Do we have any questions for Dave? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a public hearing. So we will open this item up. Don't go far. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have much objection. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to open this uh, item for public hearing. Uh, if anybody has wishes to speak to this item, please come to the microphone. Oh, see, I, was, I spoke too soon. We actually do have somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well, come, come up to the microphone and state your name. D. Lynn Barton. And uh, we have some other folks here, too, as well. We, uh, we probably don't have a concern about the annexation. Mm -hmm. But we do have some concerns uh, since that line goes right around our irrigation pond. Okay, so that where, how it curves all funky, that's your, that's your pond? Yeah, that that line right there goes right around our irrigation pond. We have concerns about what kind of impact the public might have on our pond and what impact our pond might have on some of the kids that may be staying in that uh, in that RV park. We don't know what's planned as as to a fence. Mm -hmm. There's also some other concerns as well. Um, and that is, where is the drainage from this development going to drain to? 
the natural drainage is right into Union Field Irrigation Company uh, ditch that runs right along there. And Paul Nelson is here. He's the president of Union Field Irrigation. And uh, we, so the concerns we have, I guess, is down the road. What happens to, to protect the kids that are going to be living in the RV park mm -hmm. uh, from our pond and our pond from them. The other concern is, now there is a, a, a culvert that goes, I, it's kind of off the map right there, I guess. But, um, other way. Yeah, the, uh, right there, there's a, 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 major, a major drainage that comes under the freeway and under old 91, right about there, and then spreads out in this uh, mm -hmm. undeveloped brush land and uh, dissipates. But when it's developed, it won't, it won't dissipate. So does it drain from that, that, la that land into your canal currently? <sighs> well, I don't know, it's Paul, you can speak to this a little bit. Um, in my, in my time living there, which is 33 years, I, I've never seen water that actually got through all of the brush and, and so forth out in, into where it drained into the pond. There's a pretty good berm that runs right around our pond right there. So the natural thing would be for it to go right there into Union Field Irrigation Ditch, which is a concern. Paul? Engineer's office and say this is Kit's worst nightmare, and Kit would get on the phone and say, "Hi, Paul." <laughs> <laughs> it's like holding back the tide with Cedar City putting water in our irrigation company ditch. <laughs> the ditch is designed to hold just the water that comes out of Coal Creek on a given day, and then when we have like these little flash floods and rain and stuff like that, then it overflows. And Vaughn and Nielsen and Glenn and those guys, you know, would be the first line of defense for that, but. Historically, with all of the vegetation on that property, it probably absorbs 99% of that water. And the problem we have is when you put it in gravel or asphalt or whatever, you know, every cubic foot is seven and a half gallons of water. You know, so you get an area that's 12 by 12, you know, that's, you know, it doesn't take long for you to produce, you know, thousands of gallons of water. And it always shows up at the inopportune time. As far as the irrigation company goes, uh, we've had problems with uh, why don't you fence the ditch? And I've talked to some attorneys and stuff, but if you, you know, like, like these guys that are going to put a fence around their pond, you know, then that just opens them up for, you know, other things that can happen because then they've got to maintain the, you know, the fence. And, you know, they're better off just to put signs up there, you know, no trespassing or whatever, and, you know, and do those kinds of things. But, uh, you know, like I said, this is an annex hearing, so you know we're, you know, we're probably okay with that. But when it comes time for you know, you know, the engineers to design that thing, you know, we've had property owners that have adjacent our ditches have had to put in their own drainage systems and settling ponds and stuff to handle the water. Uh, another problem you're going to have is, you know, there at the Maverick station, there's all kinds of trash and debris and stuff. That if you guys ever go out there and drive up around that old Highway 91, you see how. How the, the, wind, the wind never blows from the south <laughs> here in Cedar City, you know that. And so the Maverick Station, it just blows all that garbage right, right you know, that direction. The plastic bags and the trash and everything like that. So, you know, it's just, I guess, I'm from the old school. I'm born and raised in Cedar Valley, and I hate to tell you, when I was a kid, I used to be able to get up on the haystack, and there was a light at Grimshawville and a light at Matheson Dairy, and those were the only two lights in Cedar Valley, you know, so... That's how long I've been and here. And that was at night, right? That was at night. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, what is the process from here on out? I mean, I know this project has been before city council quite a few times, road, you yeah. know, a lot of things have happened. What is the process from here with after this annexation as far as the building and the, you know, will it come before for any more meetings? I mean, do we do a, is there like a, a vicinity plan or anything like yeah, that on a commercial piece so of property? Where like are they, they going to get the water and what are they going to do with the, you know, with their, you know, like when they go to dump the, the drainage and the trailers, are they going to have a dump <coughs> station there and stuff? And then where's that going to go? Can they tie into the sewer system? There's, 
you know, the sewer system's on the other side of the freeway there, so they'd have to go quite a ways to tie into that. So I'm not sure what kind of plans they have to make that thing work. So as far as the, I'll start kind of start with the utilities here. Um, there's actually a sewer main that comes right up in front of Maverick um, that they'll be able to tie into. Uh, yeah, we, we know where the manhole is. We, we saw that go in. <coughs> we're aware of that sewer. So there's a sewer. But we're not talking about sewer drainage. We're talking about surface drainage. Yes. Yeah. So, that, so the sanitary sewer, there's is sewer there. There's also water that, and they'll have to extend those utilities as part of their development. Um, as far as the surface drainage, they're just barely starting into the design. They have submitted drawings to the city. Um, so we're just at very, in the very early stages of reviewing those. Um, I'm not even sure if we've received a drainage study yet. Um, now, any changes or additional drainage into the irrigation company would have to be approved by the irrigation company. So, let any water go into it. So, and zero tolerance on that. And yeah, plenty out of Fiddler's Canyon. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so any so anything that the, any changes that they want to do, they would have to come and, and talk to the irrigation company. They have to come to you, the Paul. Trouble, and the trouble and the trouble they're going to have is if I, if it doesn't go into my ditch, then it goes into the Lynn's front yard. Yeah. So well, so what I'm over. hearing from Jonathan is that they have to submit a study or a, a plan for yes. the drainage to yes. keep it out of your ditch yes. and to keep it off the neighbors and to and yeah. put it in the proper place. Right? Yeah, and that's that's something we'll be reviewing throughout okay. the whole process. Well, just looking at the sketch, there's no plan for any kind of retainage basin or anything of that nature. Just as, as a <coughs> preliminary sketch that we have. I understand that. Yeah, they they have to submit a full set of construction drawings that would show that. And we'd be happy to sit down with you and go through that. We'd be um, very much interested in that because we're directly yeah. downhill from there. Yeah, and I think that'd be a good idea to, to meet and discuss that and make sure that um, they're not, um, you know, putting drainage onto private property that's not allowed. Anything that would go onto a private property would have to they'd have to get an easement from that owner. Um, so there's a lot of things that need to happen uh, at this point to make sure the drainage is handled. And, that, and, and whoever reviews this, you need to be really aware of that, of that uh, drainage that comes under old 91 there because that, just go down and look, see the big rocks there. It, it carries water on a fairly, re fairly regular basis. Yeah. yeah and like I said, sort of that water's just gone and spread out across that field. You know, so if they put in some kind of a, you know, ditch there to bring that water down to us, we won't be happy with that either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then what is the fencing requirement for ordinance for a commercially zoned piece of property? Um, it depends what's adjacent to it. Um, in this case, I'm not sure it's going to be required. Because it's all oh, county oh. adjacent to it. Yeah, and I, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. Okay. Well, uh, you understand our concern. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, you have kids that are there in that RV park, nothing to do, and uh, they're going <coughs> to look over the fence and or over the uh, boundary, and they're going to say, hey, let's go play in the pond. Yeah. I guess one thing to just make clear is that this isn't a mobile home park. This is an RV park. I so um, have so there, they, sure. they may, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something to consider in terms of safety. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to sit down with you and discuss this and, and make sure that we're understanding your concerns. Jonathan, will this, will this project come before any more public meetings? Yeah, so I need to come back for, to have the RV park approved. Okay. So at that point, you, they, they should have better drawings at that point, I would imagine. Would they have the construction drawings for that meeting? Oh, yeah. When it... Well, by the time it comes back, we'll have reviewed all the construction drawings and have all these issues worked out. So we just came this yeah. evening because we want you to understand that we have concerns. Yeah, no, we appreciate you coming. Yeah. And, and those those concerns have been heard. And uh, just and I wanted I wanted to know if it was going to come back because I honestly didn't know. And so that's that's great news. It'll it'll come back before the city council. Is that who it comes for? I believe it comes back to Planning Commission and then City Council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if it com it'll come back to us, you can come back. You can hopefully get any of your concerns or your questions answered. 
because of the and annexation, uh, we got notice. Right. For this of course. Evening. Right. Of course. Should we get on some sort of a mailing list to get notice when that happens later on? Um. That was my concern. Is yeah, will they no get notice, notice again? I don't think they will because it's if they miss unless it. there's a zone change. I don't think it will be. Right. Annexations and zone changes are the only. Yeah. Can they just give you the yep. Yeah. Absolutely. But it won't automatically happen. It's not part of the right. ordinance. Okay. If we if we wrote our uh, names, our addresses. Yeah. We could, we could get a notification. Yeah. Why don't you give that to to me, and then we can get that. And, and we'd like to have, probably meet with you even before that, yeah. before it goes back to a meeting, yeah, obviously. I'd be happy to meet any time. Yeah. We want to be helpful. Great offer. Yeah, and also with the irrigation company as well, so. Right. We'll get uh, uh, information for you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. But I, yeah, we're well aware there's, there's a lot of drainage issues that, that need to be dealt with. We've had some con conversations with UDOT, this, this drainage that comes under I-15. So there, there are a lot of, is, of issues that still need to be worked out. But, but again, we're, we're at a very preliminary stage of the process mm -hmm. with the annexation. Um, so all those issues will be worked out as we go through the process to, to get the RV park approved. Yeah. Can, can we go back to the map of the actual annexation piece? So this does include that little teeny tiny triangle, right? I saw that in sketch notes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a, yeah, it's kind that of, little there's a little triangle. triangle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's my understanding that it does include that. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, with that, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for a recommendation. Motion for a positive recommendation. Second. All right. Having a positive recommendation and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much, Commission. All right. Item number six. So this is a development agreement. Mr. Romrell Esquire will lead us through. <laughs> <laughs> it is the right way, but you say Esquire after their name, don't you? What is the technical way? I think it is after, but we can. Well, Bill and Ted said <laughs> we can Esquire uh, after their name, so yeah. <laughs> pass on the formalities. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it is Esquire from now on, sir. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Skyler Stewart's here from VE Management. If you have any specific questions on the development, um, as you may recall, this property came through for zone change to put it all into uh, Central Commercial, probably a month or two ago. Yep. In the meantime, the developers come through and requested the ability to have an agreement put in place where this property can be used for short-term rentals. Currently, the city ordinance allows that. They would like a little more assurance showing that that ability would never be taken from them because of an ordinance change. They came before the city council. The city council agreed. Uh, the council did say that there should be some restrictions on that, and that's what this development agreement kind of outlines. So just briefly, uh, this is 17 and a half acres of property located at 1221 South Main Street. Purpose of the development agreement is to allow short-term rentals on this property for a period of 20 years. Uh, this development agreement, if approved, would be recorded and then the owners of this property would have that assurance moving forward that they could, as part of their business plan, they could allow short-term rentals in there. So after 20 years? After 20 years, it would just be subject to city ordinance. I, d I don't see the city council restricting short-term rentals in com on commercial property. It seems to be ideally where it should go. But in the utmost of caution, I think that's why the developers just want to have an agreement in writing. So this is only handling the short-term rentals. Was there an IMM component in this as you? No. I must have been reading it the packet was there there's an ordinance change dealing with i m next oh i probably just switched maybe that's it. That's yeah. what I done. so i just have one question tyler because i read through this and i'm just not seeing it right now though where it talks about the 20 years exactly so it's under roman numeral six certain clarifying provisions i just don't see anything where it says 20 years because it says they're re they're they're all so permitted yeah, the term above that talks about 20 oh, years. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, because that's why I was like, I read that short-term rental part, and it didn't say anything about it, but it was right yeah. there, but you're right. Mm -hmm. yep. 
The other terms are just standard language that you've seen in all the other development agreements that have come through. Okay. Because I'm like, every this is a 13-page document, and what you just said was one sentence. So I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Good summary. Yeah. You get a bunch of F-squires in the room. <laughs> <laughs> the power of an F. That's right. In the Navy, we call them C squires <coughs> So really, outside of standard city ordinances in this zone, that's the only thing that this development agreement really uh, changes. Correct. Yep. Modifies, I guess, would be the right word. Yep. All right. And this is a document that you drafted, to, uh, Mr. Romo? Um, well, I had drafted the original, but their attorney, uh, Carson Bagley, put together some edits. I've approved them. And this is something the city's approved? Yes. Of? Okay. Yep. And this gets recorded as a deed restriction, right? No. No. This would just be recorded as a development agreement on that property. Okay. Yeah. Minor question, but when does the 20-year time clock start? Is it from when it gets approved or from when they first break ground, when a first C of O is given? When does the 20-year time clock start? Yeah, that's a good question. Looks like it sure. says they from... They don't break ground for... Yeah. 20 years. It says well. from date of recordation. <laughs> from date of, yeah, from date of being recorded. Date of recording. 20 years from date of recordation at the official Iron County that's Recorder's recorded. Office. So once it's recorded, yeah. then their time clock starts. Yep. Okay. Do you have any other questions for our beloved Mr. Romerill? <laughs> Esquire. I'll make a motion for a positive recommendation. Right. Second. We got a motion and a second for a positive recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then moving down to city item number one. So this is a public hearing for a ordinance text amendment. So the, the city went through and updated all of the city ordinances. I've talked about that briefly. So we'd have a couple clarifying things that we need to fix. This first one here is in the zoning ordinance dealing with INM property. Under the height restriction language, it currently says that there's no requirement unless restricted by section 26-126. 126 doesn't exist. It may have at one point, but we can't find it. Okay. So we're just recommending that that language be struck and that it just say that unless restricted by the airport overlay zone, adopted international building code or adopted fire code. And I've ran that by the building department, the fire department, and they're comfortable with that language. So are we just talking about city item number one? Or are we yeah. putting all three of these together? Yep, city yeah. item number one. Okay. Yep. When they talk about height requirement, though, we're talking about minimum or maximum? <laughs> well, it would be the maximum. So there is no maximum then? No. no. Ju it's just restricted by the airport overlay zone. Code. And there's an airport, airport overlay zone that That's true. has some restrictions as, as well. So. Okay. Yep. So um, with commercial buildings in the city, we're, it's limited to 50 feet. Is that right, Jonathan? I believe so. That would so I&M doesn't have that same restriction, 50 feet? I don't think so. Oh, interesting. Never didn't know. Um, okay. That's why I was getting, I'm like, so there's no maximum That's for I&M as long as, long as they're... I mean, the building code's, yeah. I think, going to... Of course. Yeah. yeah. The fire code's going to hit you. I wish I knew what 126 did say. Okay. <coughs> All right, Commission, do we have... Oh, well, do we have any questions for Tyler before I open the public hearing? All right, so with that, I'll open the public hearing for item number one regarding this text amendment. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Bring it to the commission for a recommendation. This has been an incredible exercise, making sure that we're internally consistent in our mm -hmm. ordinances. We've seen a few at council. It's so much easier to search now. No, it's, it, I've heard very good things. So, but I, I would make a uh, move for a positive recommendation. I did. Oh, ordinance sorry. change. I'll second. Okay, we got a first and a second for a positive recommendation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, item number two is a public hearing for another text amendment. So this section 26-11-2 deals with conditional use permits. They're approved by the city council. The current ordinance says that the city council can approve a conditional use permit as long as it's in compliance with section 26-104, which again doesn't exist. <laughs> so we're just clarifying, saying that they need to be in compliance with the language that's contained in this chapter. 
and there's various guidelines on what the council is to consider when they approve a conditional use permit. So I do have one question on this, Tyler. When I was reading through it, so I see these numbered questions essentially, or these now. Can you scroll down just a little bit more, Jonathan? So when we talk about what is allowed within this chapter, so if a person comes forward asking for a conditional use permit, almost like Board of Adjustments, do they have to go through each question? I mean, what it, yeah. I know the city doesn't do a lot of conditional use permits, so. Yeah, we haven't done one in seven and a half years, I can tell so you that. So, like, what is the process? Like, when, when you say allowed within this chapter, does that mean they'd have to be able to answer correctly to all these questions, or? So the, the answers to those questions guide the city council on whether they should approve it or not. Okay. Yeah. There is no thou shalt approve if you meet A, B, C, and D. It's okay. just these are the things that we consider before approving it. Okay. Because I was just curious when I read that language, it says what's permitted by this chapter. So where is, this is not including, this doesn't talk about what, the permitted is the big guide or is the uh, table of uses is what. When you say what's um, permitted by this chapter. Well, what's permitted by this chapter would be the, the table question? of uses. It would also be what okay. the city council considers with those questions. Okay, if it's so appropriate the table of uses not. is also part of that permitted yeah. by this. So chapter. chapter being all of chapter 26. 26. Okay. That I'm, answers my I'm really curious what is in 126. I know. Well, and 104. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is it? I don't no know. way to find like sorry, archived that's records that's of 126 and 104. <laughs> I'm sure if I start digging <laughs> in the basement, <laughs> I might be able to find something. <laughs> I'm sure you have nothing better to do. <laughs> Paul, B Paul Bittman hasn't been around long enough to remember 126 or 104. Yeah, we, we reviewed it as staff, and no one knew what that was. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, so this is a public hearing. I will open the public hearing for any who wishes to speak to this item. <laughs> Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Bring it back to the commission for a recommendation. A motion for a positive recommendation. A second. Uh, motion for and a second for a positive recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And our last item, item number three. This is a this is the last one you have for us, right? Yes. All right. This is the last one. Again, in this chapter, there's two sections. Well, let me back up. So this. 26, 2614-2 deals with the airport. Uh, this is the definition section. In two spots here, we reference 26-126, and that does not exist. Uh, these fall under the definitions of approach, surface, and obstruction. Both those sections are defined in the airport uh, master plan. So instead of going to the ordinance, we're just referring the reader to the master plan. Okay. Then the master plan carries the same weight as the ordinance. The same it's way. adopted by ordinance by the city council. Yep. All right. I will open a public hearing for any who wish to speak to this item. I still think we should find one twenty six. <laughs> I agree. Sounds like she needs a key to the parts of the basement and a whole bunch of boxes. I'm going to get her a flashlight, a can of Raid. You just found a free paralegal. <laughs> we'll, have a big, we'll have a big community where's Waldo. That's right. You who can find it. Yeah, that's too bad. All right, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for a recommendation. I'll make a recommend. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'll move for a positive recommendation. And I'll second that. Text amendment. All right. All right, we got a first and a second for a positive recommendation. All in favor? All right. All right, and with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.